On the day of Qiyamah, there will be a group of people who will wake up in such a state that they will be committing sins, physically committing sins on the day of Qiyamah itself. It will be said, do you not know what day this is? This is the day of Qiyamah, we take it into account. What do you do? They say, we are those people who did not give up our sin in the world for we knew Qiyamah is going to come. Which is why Rasulullah said, and which means, you will wake up on the day of Qiyamah in that act which you used to get involved in. You will be treated with those people who you imitated. You will be dealt with those people whom you loved. So to love someone, to imitate someone, you will get dealt with them. You understand? The way you are. The state of your heart, the way it is in the world, that is your situation in the hereafter. Where does your heart lie? The heart only becomes sincere towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if number one, if you commit your life to Allah. Now this does not mean, brothers, you know, brothers and brothers and sisters, often men as I've mentioned before, that you know when someone becomes practicing the deen in inverted commas, it doesn't mean that you stop living your life, that you stop chilling out with your mates, you stop having a good time with your friends and your family. It just means you prioritize. You prioritize, understand? It doesn't mean that you leave everything always going to be a held the misbah into your hand and he sat in the corner of the mosque and said, Allah, 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 Fulfilling your rights towards one another, towards your family, towards your friends. This is living an Islamic life. An Islamic life is not that you abandon the world that you live in. Rather, it means the world that you live in Put a barrier between you and this world and understand that this world one day will be destroyed. Don't attach yourself to the world. But in the Guriyat, in the Shadaid, you know, in times of difficulty, if something is tahkul asbab, something is possible in a world limana to help you, use that to help you. For example, you know, if you pass up someone and you need a jump lead, use a jump lead. You understand? If you can't stop in the middle of nowhere, and if you just jump out and say, Misura Yasin Fakta, good for good, God, God, you should move it. Our Hongi Allah, if we believe on the whole Sakta, but if someone rago like me, it ain't happening, you understand? Man's gonna need jump leads. You're gonna have to ring the AA. This is living your life. But you know, the state of your mind should not be as such that I just want this world, and when time for Salah comes, Make every excuse not to pray yourself. When zakat becomes wajib, wajib upon you, make every excuse not to pray that zakat. When you know that someone genuinely needs your help, you make every excuse not to help that individual. This is when you put yourself into a state of khafla. One of the greatest punishments on the day of Tayama is as follows. Those individuals who committed sins, then bragged about them in this world. You know, if you commit a sin, you do karne ke baad, phir uski khub tarif karna. Aap pata maine kya kiya? Do you know what I've done? And you think you're a bad man for talking about your sins? La ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah rabbil baraya wa minal khataya. One of the biggest sins anyone can do is to do a sin and then brag about it. What happens for every single person who becomes aware of that sin, you will be held accountable for them as well. For them knowing about that sin, you will be held accountable for it. Rather, prepare for Qiyama in such a way that you sincerely turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the life of our liege Lord and the Master of Allah's creation. Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi alfi alfi marratan wa mithla dhalik. Look at his life. Look towards him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam. 
where Qayyama would be mentioned. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to teach us a lesson. His eyes would get full of tears. His eyes would be full of tears that the day has finally come. No, it's just a reminder. Has the day come? No, it's just a reminder. There was an incident where the companions asked Rasulullah sallallahu Oh, Messenger of Allah, why has the facial feature changed? Why has your beautiful heavenly face changed? He says, I feared for you that when the day of Qiyamah comes, I feared for you. I feared for you. As a community, I feared for you. Sayyidina Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. Bi idhni dhami azza wa jal. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was given the permission to wake up the dead. Mu'ajizat al-Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. He went to a group of people to do da'wah. To tell them that he is a messenger of Allah and that Allah is one who is alone and has no partners. Qadirul Mutala does what he wants, how he wants, where he wants. Befitting to his majesty, Janda Jalaluhu wa Amma Nawaluhu. Nobody intervenes in that matter. When he gave his Prophet Isa alayhi salam permission to do something that the mind cannot logically understand. What does this mean? It means that the glory and the power of Allah is expressed in this world through the people of Allah. So when Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam went to a group of people and he said to them, believe in Allah as one. They said, prove to us that you're a prophet. And he said, what should I do? They said, bring a dead person to life. And he said, choose someone. Choose someone. By the permission of Allah, I will put life into them. They went to a grave, which was some 20, 30 years old. Someone had been buried there for 20, 30 years or so. He went towards the grave and they said, no, stop. Go to an older grave. Go to an older grave. He said, find the older grave. Then they found a grave that was in its hundreds, two, three hundred year old grave. Also, in the Quran, And Sayyidina Isa, ala nabikina wa alayhi salatu salam, he stood there and he said, Kum bi idhnillah. Stand by the permission of Allah. At that moment, the grave splits open. An old man comes crawling out. To the extent where his beard wasn't only white, but it was frail and his bones were frail and he was drained of life, literally. Just woken up from the dead. And Sayyidina Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu salam said, Were you not a young man when you were buried? For it says on the tombstone that you were no older than 21. So what is this? Why do you wake up in such a state? He said, By Allah who has given me life now. By Allah who has given me life now. When I heard you say, Kum, I thought it was the angel calling out for the day of Qiyam. Out of the fear of being taken into account, I have lost myself again. 